Hey guys, how's it going? Olian here. Let's take a look at how to recreate this uh, synth sound from 24K Magic from Bruno Mars. Um, I think it's a pretty cool sound and you know it from like many oldie like sounding songs and also well from songs back in the days because it's it's a classic. So I thought it would be cool to have in your arsenal and um, yeah, let's go over it real quick. I'm going to recreate it in silent, but um, I'm going to explain things in a way that you can basically recreate it in any synth of your choice. Um, and yeah, I think it's always a cool approach to kind of understand the background behind the sound and then be able to do that anywhere instead of just learning it for a specific synthesizer and then not really understanding the concept behind it. So yeah, let's jump right in. Um, before we get started with the synthesizer itself, um, let's take a quick look at the chords because with these kind of sounds many times the chord is quite important to already make up a big part of the sound. So usually when you have like a really nice sound that will feels like a chord or feels like a big patch and these kind of things, try to listen and check out the chords and I, well, I did my best trying to recreate them. I'm pretty sure it's not exactly the same as in the original, but for now they will do. So I came up with a, a C minor seventh chord and then an F minor seven in a different voicing or a slightly altered voicing, which leaves us with a C, an E flat, a G and a B flat. Even though Ableton always says like D sharp and A sharp to all the sharps or flats in uh, uh, that you draw in technically sometimes it I, well the reason i say uh, e flat instead of d sharp is that if i'm kind of thinking of a c minor scale you have a c a d and then an e flat instead of a d sharp because you don't have the same note in one scale twice and since in c minor you do have a d you won't have a d sharp just a little background inf info anyway and then yeah so for the F minor seven, um, we have a C, an E flat, an F, and an A flat. And if you just put these two notes to C an octave higher, then you can see it's kind of the sa same uh, scheme as before, where you have a where you have three half steps, then four half steps, and then three half steps to the next note. But in order to have a slightly more closed voicing. Um, we can put these two lower, uh, one octave lower, which also gives you two common tones. I know this is technically a video about synthesis, but I thought maybe it's also interesting background to do a little bit of music theory first, because it's kind of important when it comes to designing the sound to also have decent chords. Um, okay, let's jump into silent. I'm gonna go right ahead and initialize the patch. Um, so. Many of these old school sounds are made of like um, sawtooth waves or square waves. And I think the reason for that is that back in the days, many of the Moog uh, synthesizers and other classics, they only had those two waveforms as an option and not like these crazy wavetable options as you have today and like Serum and Massive and this kind of stuff. So m usually if you go for an old school kind of sound, you can get started with those waveforms. And then specifically in this case, because it has like a brass typey kind of sound, you can usually, you're usually right in assuming that it's made out of a um, sawtooth wave. So that's how I'm going to start as well. And so let's give it a quick listen what it sounds like right now. Okay, sounds like we're already heading the right direction. Um, but the chord sounded a bit weird. So the first thing we have to take care of is actually the polyphony. So your synthesizer probably also allows you to choose how many different uh, notes you can play at the same time. For a bass, for example, you might want to play only one note, but then for pads and other things, you want, might want to be able to play more than one. And you, the reason this can be interesting is, well, you might be like, why not just put the number up and you can play as many notes as you want. Um, if you use the legato stuff and the portamento and these kind of things, or if you kind of press a key that you didn't want to press or whatever, um, you can usually use this option, yeah, to kind of make something happen there. But for now, we're just going to turn the polyphony to four because the chords consisted of four notes. If you want to put another note in the low end to thicken that up a bit or something, you can obviously adjust 
the polyphony right here, but um, at least four or maybe more if you feel like it. So um, that's step number one. So this is where we're at now. Okay, even slightly closer. So we already figured out that we have to use the sawtooth wave because it sounds similar. So the next step we have to do to get closer to the sound that we want is detuning um, the waves. That's going to give us like a, um, a chorus -y effect. Well, you can also later use a chorus effect to do that, but I usually like to do this in the synthesizer. So it kind of has a special effect if you, well, detune it instead of just using a chorus effect. Um, so the way you can do that in silent is either pick a bunch of voices and then use the detune knob to detune them, which is gonna, well, effectively gonna slightly alter the pitch of the different voices um, that you create. So what voices means is that you play the same wave several times, which is obviously gonna make it louder. So instead of playing this wave once, it plays it four times if I set the voices to four. And if I now move the detune button, it's going to detune the four voices against each other, which means it slightly change the, changes the pitch of each voice. Um, if you don't have this function, because my, many synthesizers might not allow you to detune it like this, you can use several oscillators and then just alter the pitch by a little bit. So let's say we take a second oscillator over here, A2, also pick a saw wave, also pick one voice, and then we have a fine tune knob here. Um, here you can change the pitch by octave note and then fine tune between notes. Um, so changing that a bit will also have a detuning effect. So let's listen to what we got right now if we do that. So it sounds very phasey and not really like what we want. So the difference between a chorus and just um, detuning them is basically that be you pan the voices that you detune, which gives you like a very wide stereo sound um, and also kind of um, doesn't allow as much cancellation, at least when you listen to it in stereo. So there's the sound doesn't sound as phasey and everything. Um, so let's actually do a mix right now where we say, hey, we're going to use the function of silence to detune, which is kind of like a chorusing effect. And we're actually going to do that with both oscillators in this case, because I felt like in the end, um, playing around with the different detune and the fine tune and these kind of things, that's, that's what led to sounding the best. But um, let's listen what we got right now. Now we have a nice stereo sound, but it still sounds very phasey. And now is where the retrig mode comes in. So re what retrigger does is that every time you press a key, it starts waveforms over from the beginning of the cycle and also place every waveform of each key that you press um, at the same point. So if you don't have the retrig mode, obviously a note that you play at a higher pitch is going to be through or it's going to have run through different cycles or a different amount of cycles than a lower note, for example, because the wavelength of a lower note is longer, which means it takes longer to go through the cycle. And let's say we play a C more or less in the middle of the keyboard and it, it takes a certain amount or let's make up a number. It takes two second, seconds to um, uh, walk through a cycle uh, or move through a cycle, which is obviously now made up, but just bear with me. And then we have another C which we play at the same time. Um, even though this one is going to be done in two seconds, or we're going to have run through the cycle in two seconds, this might have run through the cycle after one and a half seconds and be then a quarter along the way once uh, this has completed its cycle. And then if we press notes, this is going to be at a different starting point than the lower note, for example. So if you turn the retrig mode off, it's going to actually have a positive effect for this sound because it kind of allows the, the sounds to take up different space and um, yeah, it gets more pad like it's, it's pretty cool. So this is already kind of what we need. We detuned the voices. We turned off the retrig mode. Um, if you don't know how to do that in your synthesizer, you should definitely check the manual. 
and just in general i think it's very imp important to know your way around your synthesizer into voicings and these kind of things like the retrick how you can detune them is there another option you have to do those kind of things and um yeah i mean here you have two different options to detune them but they do slightly different things and here i combined them but you will maybe even have different options to do that in your synthesizer and um, just check them out but uh, basically what you're doing is just detuning the the voices that you're using um, so yeah now we're already pretty close now we can do a bit of fine tuning and add some extra stuff to make it sound slightly cooler um, many of these old school sounds have a little bit of vibrato in them so I decided to create vibrato um, with an LFO because in silence you don't have a like a standard vibrato function like you might have in Massive, for example. So the way you can do that is altering the pitch because vibrato is basically uh, a, a small change of pitch over time. Um, and for that we can take for we can either take a sine wave for the LFO or a triangle wave. I usually like the triangle wave because the sine wave starts very sharply or very steeply with a lot of increase and then gets less uh, while the triangle wave is uh, runs more smoothly because it has a, a constant increase and decrease which can be smoother than having this um, yeah sine wave even though a sine wave might look smoother it, it's not actually smoother if you think of what the wave means and what it does to if you use it as an LFO so let's take the triangle wave we're altering the pitch let's pick a rate of like here you can choose between a quarter an eighth a sixteenth whatever you feel like i'd take an eighth in this case because i think it um, works nicely with like the rhythm of a four by four uh, kind of beat even though we're not necessarily have a four to the floor beat in this case i'm i'm just choosing an eighth note um, increasing the pitch very slightly because otherwise it's going to be a lot and let's let's listen to one way for a second what that sounds like if we turn up the gain okay i just have to choose this real quick with it without it okay so this is obviously way too much but if we do it very subtly It gives even like a slightly more movement into the patch and what i then decided to do which is just a little side technique that you can use is actually put an envelope on the gain of the lfo because i wanted to have the beginning kind of with no vibrato and then the vibrato coming in slightly for the longer notes because F especially the short notes suffer a bit if you have vibrato um, because they become less clear so i said okay lfo gain one because we're using LFL one and um, we want to alter the gain. I turned the gain all the way down. Um, just turned the gain up here slightly, which means it's going to modulate it up to a certain point, but very little. And then just give it some attack. This way it's going to take some time for the vibrato to kick in. So that's cool. Um, technically, like the last thing I use for this patch is a filter. Technically, we don't necessarily need a filter for the sound, but I was like, well, I'm just going to set up a filter uh, and, and play around a bit and see what's happening. And in, these, in the end, I decided to use a high pass filter, uh, a, low, a low pass filter, a uh, high cut filter with 24 dB to also give it a bit of drive and distortion and add some warm drive. Um, these are all just like extra things. And the, the main thing which I decided to do with the filter is actually kind of finding the finding the point where the sound starts getting a bit dull exactly and then pushing the resonance this is almost like a little bit like an eq because you're pushing the frequencies at a cutoff frequency which boosts the highs and in, in this case um, it's going to put a bit more focus on them which is cool. And now it still sounds slightly dull or let's make it even slightly duller. Okay, then we can um, 
say, okay, right now it sounds slightly dull, but we want this brass effect um, that you also have when you play like trumpets and saxophones that the sound comes in with a bit of attack, um, uh, with a bit of attack time for it to like kind of press out. And obviously you can use the amp envelope to do that and give it some attack, but I found it cooler to use a filter which starts out with a bit it starts out with a slightly duller sound and then opens up a bit over time, um, which is also going to make it louder over time and brighter. And then you have a, um, a more significant effect than just using the amp envelope, for example. Um, so let's choose the cutoff A and B down here. Whoop, here, cutoff AB filters, um, make it slightly brighter, turn up this all the way, give it some, yeah, now it kind of slides in, um, which is cool. Then for the amp envelope, I'm just going to give it a bit of uh, release because it's always cool, maybe a slight attack because we don't have to have it super clicky and um, That's too much. Cool. So right now it sounds a bit metallic and a bit bad and not exactly like the original. But about that, first of all, we're probably not using the same synthesizer they were using. They probably used some analog gear like a, um, yeah, like a Moog or something like that. And um, they obviously sound much nicer and softer and this kind of thing. Um, but we can process this a bit to make it sound nicer. For example, some reverb will help because it's kind of going to fill up the sound a bit. So the size here is just like a time thing. So I'm going to turn that right down. But yeah. So in order to make that sound better, we can also add some noise. We can do some other stuff. We, um, I mean, you can figure those things out, but I think right now at this point, we covered kind of the basic fundamental structure of this, this kind of brass sound, um, which is cool to have in your arsenal. And um, my final preset actually sounds like this. Um, let me see if I can find that right here right now. Exactly. With a little bit less gain for the LFO. So if you want that preset to kind of also have a starting point, maybe feel free to hit me up on Facebook. I'm going to put um, the link to my fan page in the description and you can just write me and I'm going to be happy to send you the presets. Um, I recreated the sound in uh, silence as well as in massive. So if you want the massive preset instead, let me know. Um, and then you can get going learning some cool techniques about synthesis and um, yeah, recreate this cool sound from 24K Magic. All right, that's it for today. Hope you stay tuned for some other videos. Feel free to subscribe and stick around. Hope to see you around. Bye.